Critical Ops is a game full of tactics and strategy, to the point where even your playstyle can affect your team composition. Right now, there are two different playstyles. The passive playstyle, where you wait for the enemy team to run into your crosshair, and the aggressive playstyle, where you are running into your opponent's crosshair. Usually, you will see newer players with a passive playstyle, then as they gain more confidence, they adopt an aggressive playstyle, and once they have developed their game sense, they can switch between passive and aggressive playstyles on the fly. Now, you're not just sitting in a corner doing nothing or running headlong into the enemy team, you need to be proactively doing something so your team doesn't think you're just throwing. So I asked myself, what is the best way to utilize my playstyle in Critical Ops? So I turned to the only source that I could rely on, Counter-Strike Tips and Tricks. I mean, come on, Seops is basically a mobile clone of Counter-Strike. Regardless, depending on your preferred playstyle, you need to assign yourself to one of these eight roles so that you have a general idea of what to do during a match so you're not just riding on your teammates to the top of the leaderboards. I should really take my own advice, huh? Anyways, without further ado, here are the different roles you can play as in Critical Ops. First, we have the Bombsite Anchor, or Anchor Player for short. These players are responsible for locking down a bombsite, even after the rest of their team rotates off. Usually, the bombsite the Anchor Player plays on is either the furthest from the breach or is the most difficult site to take. The main goal for the Bombsite Anchor is to stop bombsite fakes or to catch lurkers who are trying to sneak through the back door. You would want to position yourself where you have lots of cover and an escape route in case you get overrun so you can take up a different angle. And in the event your bombsite does get hit right off the bat, then you still have your teammates to back you up. See, as a bombsite anchor, you don't become the bombsite anchor right out of the gate. You say you will be the bombsite anchor in case your teammates need to rotate to the other bombsite. That way you can hang back and make sure that all of the breach is taking the other bombsite. They do not, under any circumstances, leave that bombsite, even if their entire team got mowed down on the other bombsite. This ensures that your team has at least one gun going into the next round instead of yodeling on the bombsite trying to take a 1v5. That's not gonna work. But if this does happen, then the bombsite anchor will usually just go for exit frags. Next up, you know them, you love them, it's the sniper player. These players are responsible for holding those long and hard to hit angles, that doing so with a regular assault rifle isn't going to work as well. And yes, I said hold, because that's what snipers are made to do. I mean, I'm not the one to tell you how you should play with snipers, but there are better ways to use them rather than getting up close and taking the chance that you might hit that no scope. Usually you want to give this to the player that has the fastest reaction time, since they can hit targets sooner than the rest of their team. A nice thing to do for your team is if you have money, ask if anyone wants to snipe. Odds are one of them is bound to say yes. So you would buy them the Eurasio, they buy an assault rifle, and you two switch it up. That way your economy doesn't get out of sync and your whole team can full buy when you need to. Now you see him, now you don't. It's the Lurk player. The Lurk is responsible for holding the flank as well as relaying information to their teammates. These players are good at getting behind the enemy team, taking the least expected route and catching them off guard. The most important thing about the Lurk player is that they need to be super quiet. Absolute silence. No using utility, no running around, no randomly shooting their weapons, nothing. Because if they do, their position can be exposed and no longer has the element of surprise. The only time they should be making noise is when they have the enemy team in their sight, ready to dismantle whatever plans they have, or I should say, had. Sometimes the lurk pays off and you could get away with a 2 or 3k, but sometimes someone looks behind them at just the right time. While this might be a bad thing for you, it is a great thing for your team since this can provide a well-timed distraction for your team as the enemy team is probably looking the other way. Probably. Up next is the support player, the player who just wants to help their team even if they don't have any kills. The support player's job is to provide, well, support to their teammates in any way they can. This could be flashing for them so they can swing, setting up smokes or flashes to help with bombsite takes, or hold an angle for another player so they aren't peeking two angles at once. At some point during our matches, we all have been the support player. Just like how you can support this channel by liking the video to let me know you guys like the stuff I'm putting out, and subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so you don't miss another upload, and sharing this video with that one friend that desperately needs these tips. Now, 
Moving on, we have the rotator. The rotator is responsible for floating between bomb sites or to different spots where their teammates have died or just need extra cover fire. Now, rotators can be paired with an additional role like sniper or support because the rotator just moves from one place to another and that doesn't really do much. A rotating sniper can cut off an enemy advancement by holding a longer angle or a rotating support can make sure the enemy team doesn't push any further by using utility. Rotators must also be able to clear angles because, as the name suggests, they are rotating into potential hostile territory and need to be ready for action at every single angle they clear. Next, we have the Entry Player, also known as the Entry Fragger. The Entry Player is responsible for being the first player in and clearing out any angles the enemy team might be holding. This player needs to know the common angles to peek as well as being able to handle the off-angle peaks. Now, this role is not for the faint of heart due to the fact that you are going to die. A lot. But that is okay. Even though you died, you can still relay any information you can that can help your team. Positions or stuff like that. As well as having help from your support player giving you the entry flash you need, you will also be getting support from the next role you can play, which is the Refrag Player, also known as the Second Entry or Refragger. The Refragger is responsible for helping the entry player clear angles, get trades, and get into other angles that the entry player can't. The Refragger, in a way, is kind of like a support player, except they only throw the flash for the entry player. The key to being a good Refragger is being able to peek behind where the entry player peeks. That way, you don't get in their way and give them a clear line of sight to their target. And when I say peek behind, I know there's non-English speakers in here, I don't mean peek after them. I mean stand behind them as if you were going to peek that angle solo. Essentially double peeking. Finally, we have the in-game leader role, or IGL. The IGL is responsible for calling out different strats for their team, being able to keep the team's morale high so they can perform better, and be able to fill any role that the team needs for that round. The IGL should be the most experienced player and have an understanding of how the enemy team thinks. So that way, they can plan around what they think the enemy team is going to do each round. They should also be able to listen to their teammates, because sometimes the IGL strats ain't cutting it. So they would turn to their teammates for any information on what the enemy team is doing to get a better understanding of how the enemy team is setting up. Now, if you know anything about my video format, you know that I like to save the most important information for last, just to make sure that you guys are still watching up to this point. The thing about each of these roles is that you're not stuck with just one of them for the entire game, but rather you need to be able to know how to play every role. Each match that you play is going to be different, not one moment from every round is going to be the same. So you need to be able to switch to a different role in the middle of a match to be able to meet the needs of your current situation. If you're a bomb site anchor and you know that the whole breach is going to the opposite site, then you need to switch up to a rotator or a lurk to flank the enemy team. If you're an entry player, but you're low on health, then switch to refrag or support player and let your refragger become your entry from that point. Passive playstyle or aggressive playstyle? Which will you choose? And while you're thinking about that, here are some videos that YouTube is recommending you watch. And both of them better be my videos, otherwise I'm gonna lurk in your room tonight. Lock your doors.